It's August 4th, 2012, and I just paid $2 for balls. <laughs> this is Idle Thumb 68, and I'm Chris Remo. I'm Jake Rodkin. I'm Nick Brecken. And I'm Steve Gaynor. And Sean Vanneman isn't here because he's not. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for showing up to this episode of Idle Thumbs. Yep, thanks. We appreciate it. Uh, hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how to do these very well. We yeah, we're tax, bad at live episodes. And that was two years ago. Um, but now we're at QuakeCon. Yeah. Yep. Enjoying a lot of sweet PC games. Yeah. And doing a podcast. Yeah. yeah. We played Dishonored. That's definitely that was true. fun. We all played a lot of Dishonored, kind of, because it's seemingly a pretty sweet game. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you guys gotten to play Dishonored? Anybody here gotten to go down to the floor and check it out? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> JP's it's a, excited. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a first-person stealth game. It's kind of like a cross between Thief and Bioshock. Like, you stealth around and assassinate dudes, but also you have mystical powers. Um, Supernatural. Oh, sorry. Can, can you? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> can, can, the only reason I'm here to just like. Can you <laughs> disambiguate that shit, correct. Bethesda <laughs> representative? Hmm? What is the difference between supernatural and mystical powers in uh, this case? I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the difference is that one of them is on the press release. Yeah, one of them, oh, okay. on the one of them isn't. And, uh, yes. So, yeah, some so sort of supernatural ghost or something gives you powers. <laughs> um. so, correct, so, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. You play a ghost yes. who is honorable, and you, have, <laughs> you cast spells on now a robot. I have to quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's a pretty good game, though. So you got, you, you got to play, uh, Chris, the, um, the level that was out on the show floor, right? The one where you're supposed to kidnap a scientist? Mm -hmm. Oh, Did I also play played one? that. Uh, they also, yesterday they were showing um, one where you went to a party, and it was like, non there weren't guards around, you could just wander around a party, kind of like, observing and stuff for a long time. That was what Can they you had party? in the press room yesterday. <laughs> uh, you can't, like, press X to party down or anything, oh. unfortunately, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's pre-release build, it's fine. They'll yeah, they'll get that in. They'll get that in. Um, but no, it's, it's a really interesting game because it's very uh, non-linear, like especially the, the party uh, level that I played, which is like you walk around this estate and you can just kind of go up and talk to people and see what's going on and people are just walking around having conversations. Could you deploy rats in the party? Yes, you could. Because in the demo on the show floor, you have a power of some kind that isn't a plasmid, yeah. where, um, <laughs> where um, it's not, yeah. but uh, where you can just summon a bunch of rats that come flying up out of, I guess, presumably the holes in the environment, but they just sort of come out of the ground, and then they eat people until all of their skin comes off. Yeah. yeah. Which is amazing, but, and it also attracts other, other like, guards get distracted by the fact that there's a rat eating guy, and then they also start getting devoured do, by rats. Do real rats get attracted by like, the rotting corpse? Oh, I don't know if environment rats, rats do, but they do. Like, the, thing oh, they that's, do, really? the thing that's the best about the rats I was kidding. eating that's guys, a real yeah, thing no, yeah. Yeah. This game. rats yeah. summon guards and rats. That's, that's the two <laughs> properties of rats. Does, yeah. does um, the game, if you let it run long enough, will you just crash your system because so many rats? <laughs> the, rats the rats eventually yeah. dissipate, but the, yeah. the rats yeah, eat these guys until they're nothing but just like muscle and gristle, just this weird, just sort of skinless guy. But then the best thing about it's that is cool you games. can still walk up to that big sort of pile of, <laughs> of vaguely connected limbs and hold X to pick it up like you would a regular corpse. So I was playing the mission on the show floor and I picked up this just p p puddle of musculature, <laughs> just gross, walked into the room where the, the guy was that I'm supposed to be like escorting back out and then just threw this horrible ruined body down on the table and nothing happened. But I was really excited by that. Like, yeah, also just... Summoning rats. That's also and then a pretty good way to like pacify somebody who you're supposed to be capturing. Is well, this is the last guy that I was supposed <laughs> to bring in? Yeah, it just it makes you into the worst person in a really yeah. good way, where you can you can alert guards to your presence by just throwing <laughs> the skinless remains of their friend right in front of their feet from a three floor balcony. Well, let's see. Like, saying it's a really intellectual game. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, <laughs> it's a it's a thinking like man's video game. It's a, yeah, it's a thinking it's man's a, rat it's a game summoner for the, for the thinking yeah. sociopath. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's I mean that that kind of thing. Uh, there, there are a lot of ways to be, you know, expressive or to decide I'm going to do something weird and then actually yeah. do it in the game. Yeah. And you, you noticed me do something, uh, and, and I don't know what it was, but you said you were going to tell me what I oh, did right. that you, you saw me do. You rescued I, a prisoner yeah. who walked up to you and started telling you information, and then you just immediately strangled them to death. <laughs> and then you picked up their corpse and threw it onto the mattress so it landed in this really yeah. awkward splayed position, and then you yep. walked away. And I was like, no. what is but, happening? But then, then he came back and threw another man on top of Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> oh, no. Those are, those are, these are two different things. Yeah. So let me explain. <laughs> so, so one was, yeah, there was, you so you, you go to the stuff. scientist 
area and he's like dictating this thing about how he's gonna like vivisect this person or something and they're in a cage. And so you can unlock the cage and they're like, thank you. And I was like, you're welcome. And then I went around behind them and just choked them out uh, and threw them on the ground for no reason whatsoever. The thing that Nick is talking about is yeah, in the, in the party level it's in a huge estate, right? And like the party's going on downstairs and then people's bedrooms are upstairs, not supposed to go up there. So I was sneaking around up there and these guards you know, started to see me. So I, like you have trank darts, you can knock people out. So I knocked out one and dragged his body into a bedroom so nobody would find it. And then his friend came around the corner, I knocked him out and I was like, this will be scandalous. And I threw them on top of each other <laughs> on like the lady's bed. And I was like, they're gonna get in some trouble. <laughs> Uh, you yeah. said, yeah, yeah you I walked did. out of the room, it closed was a, the door. So yeah, I mean, also there's a video game in this video game that doesn't involve just fucking around doing stupid things, <laughs> <laughs> but that was what we enjoyed about it. Yeah, I yeah. That's the idle thumbs mode, is they just remove all the level structure and like missions, and it's just sandbox of creating like sex scandal. <laughs> yeah. I can possess a guy and walk him into a pile of rats. Like, yeah. But then you depossess him and find out that you're the one in the rats, which is too bad. Yeah, I don't, how does that work? Because I, I possessed a guy. What's the I magical just... explanation behind the possession? <laughs> yeah, is that mystical? Well, or it's, mystical? It's, it's, it's sort of a spoiler. Ugh. Oh. Who invited this guy? <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, yeah, no, there's, there, there's, like a, there's a ghost man. I knew it. There is, there, I mean, there I is. It. There's a supernatural man, and, you know, he gives you the powers. They've talked, that's not a spoiler. That's, that's not a spoiler. That's not a spoiler met, to say that much. Yeah. I see outsider because I, I like climbed up a bunch of you appear where the where the possessed okay, guy. Okay, yeah, I didn't. That's understand. what happened. I was confused because yeah, yeah, I thought that I was walking around a guy inside of his head, and then yeah. I would warp back to myself. Like Steve, you're, you found out that it didn't work that way because you possessed the guy, and then walked him off a cliff into the water, <laughs> and then tried to jump out of him, and then found out that you were the one off the cliff. I was which also is, in the water. Uh, Twitter chills. Yeah. Twitter chills. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. What else were we going to say about this game? <laughs> it looks really pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a I mean, beautiful I like, game. I like that it's very... Um, this is something that I think a lot of games in this vein have. If you go back to the kind of Looking Glass stuff and Bioshock, like a lot of the game experience is just very muted. I mean, that's expressed in the art direction as well. You know, it's a very... Visually speaking, it's sort of a quiet game. It looks really nice. It looks really beautiful. But there's not, like... <laughs> it's not just speaking, exploding in your game. face and all then the you time. Play it. Well, obviously, the things that happen are ridiculous. But, like... But, you know, in a good way. But the but it's tonally, it's not super in your face. Yeah. And I like that because, it, to me, it's suggestive of the kind of open-ended avenues that are available to you in the gameplay, which is that the game is not overtly trying to message you yeah. a, a, a tone, right? Like, it's not throwing well, a bunch of exploding cutscenes in your face and implying that that's what you should be trying to mirror in so the So I gameplay. think it is. I mean, because it's doing the opposite, right? It's saying, like you should probably try to be quiet and blend in, yeah. you know? Because the opposite would be you should be trying to explode everything constantly, which is yeah, what most but, games do. But right? still, all of your actual verbs are, pretty much all your verbs are violent in nature, so I right. feel like there's enough implication. Like, it's a video game, so the implication <laughs> is always murder everybody, you know? I mean, like, that's just always there. Regardless. But so the tone has to work against that, right? Which is, I think, yeah. part of what they're trying oh, to do. Oh, fair enough, yeah. yeah. So they balance it out. Yeah. I like it. It's yeah. cool. And it, I mean, it is a really nice-looking game. Mm -hmm. It's the... Uh, guy who did the art direction for Half Life Two yeah, got hired Richard on for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Well, he did the sort of architectural stuff, and then Sebastian Maton at Arcane did the uh, sort of character art and larger, larger scope. Well, because like the mechanical stuff. Who painted yeah, those bricks? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. John. What are you here for? What I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's awkward. It's so awkward to talk about this game because I'm. I don't know. I yeah. see it every day, and I just. I basically live this game for months. And it sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> It is fun. I mean, like, my job in the last two weeks was to just basically make creative kills of dudes. So, like, everything that you guys did in, like, so five minutes. So you can minutes, put them on an internet? I just do that for, like, two weeks. Yeah, we're going to put it on the internet, so it'll be good. Oh, creativekills.net? Creative kills. It'll be the creativekills.net.org. Yeah, A creative kills license uh, attribution. Uh, That's yeah. going to be expensive, because you're going to have to register net.org. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's a good game, though. Yeah. Did anyone here actually bring their own computer? Yes. Oh, we got BYOC. -ers. That's. I have nothing to say about that other than thank God that you brought your own computer. Because <laughs> I went like the last time I was at QuakeCon was in 2001, and I also didn't have a computer then, and I lamented not being MOC. Uh, <laughs> and this year it's the same thing. I'm sad. 
I wish that I was here just playing a video. Well, I, I mean, I've never been to QuakeCon I, before, and I think I was expecting it, I, I, was, I was assuming it was going to be more show floor, and in fact, it's heavily weighted towards, so BYOC for people that aren't at QuakeCon and are on the internet means bring your own computer, and it's basically just rows and rows and rows of tables in this huge, like, I don't know, fucking hangar. airplane hangar. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the, the biggest land setup I've ever seen. Yeah, um, it's pretty awesome. And yeah, it's, everybody just brings their own hardware and plays whatever they and want. And then some people just browse Reddit, which is the <laughs> fucking stupidest thing to me, but whatever. Although the, yeah. the best and most you can't awkward be was when I, I, walked past, I walked past someone, and I, I tweeted this last night, who I saw browsing Reddit, but then he was unfortunately just middle-clicking links that had the red NSFW tag. <laughs> into background tags while sort of looking over his shoulder and I was like, no, I gotta go to sleep. Horrible, horrible. Uh, see, that, that guy gives way more of a shit than the multiple dudes that I saw who just, their wallpaper was just... You minimize Minecraft just, and the breasts. Yeah, they're yeah. just like pouring wallpaper. I'm just like, all right, you just just doing it. Don't Whatever. fuck. <laughs> it's like, bring your own computer. Yeah, I'm bringing my computer. I'm not changing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's 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 impressive, and we saw the dude who yeah, was the, the fucking lord. The, hi of the highlight of the BYOC area is is yeah, fifty two inch HD TV as monitor lord, like where it's just a guy with a screen the this big who then had Minecraft running on the equivalent <laughs> of a twenty four inch monitor windowed in there, and then he had IRC in the equivalent of a twenty inch portrait monitor, and then this whole like. Just Three square room. feet was yeah. just nothing. It was like, background, and he was, was like this far area. from it. It was yeah, yeah. it was the best. Yeah. That was, so that guy yeah. is my favorite guy. I, I, yeah, if you're I, here, you're the best. I really, do, I really do. I, I completely love that how big of a monitor he was, and he's like, yeah. oh, but if I want to play Minecraft, I really need a normal sized monitor. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was that, it was that <laughs> sharp TV, basically. Yeah, yeah. he brought his yeah, own computer to our that, panel. But like, yeah. it was basically. That. I feel yeah. like if, if the next panel isn't using this, we should probably cobble together a computer and set it up next to that guy with that fucking monitor. <laughs> just like, just quietly, just, just quietly next to him, yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna run Minecraft full screen, so we can actually just see the UI this big. Like. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't uh, know what I'm doing, but I clearly have selected wool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's that show floor is good. Yeah, yeah. T-shirt guys throwing stuff, balls being sold. Yeah, I heard that you paid two dollars for balls. I was at Quake and I had to drink some balls. <laughs> What, How do you not? What do they taste like? <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? What does it taste like? It's true. Um, it tastes like kind of gross Red Bull. I don't know. All right, yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of that Red Bull. sounds yeah. redundant to me. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I, can. <laughs> I kind of like Red Bull. Oh, really? Okay. I'm sorry. Right. That's fine. Yeah, that's all right. They were chilled. <laughs> the balls was chilled. <laughs> 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 Got to keep us in the singular. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Huh? Nothing. What's so, what's so funny about that? Nothing. <laughs> no, I, well, I mean, your energy drink. So yeah, when when I first came to QuakeCon, you know, I was just walking around trying to get the Yesterday? lay of land. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like <laughs> when with, I first came within, to QuakeCon, within the first like twenty minutes of being within QuakeCon, I was just walking around trying to figure out where stuff was, and I was just just hearing people chatting, and just kind of like, like balls, balls. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why are people oh, talking about the balls, balls Parker. so much? And I'm like, oh, the drink. <laughs> it, was a, it was a weird. You didn't and hear, you didn't hear the W in there. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. You really should pronounce it properly, which is bowels. <laughs> then you'd be able to tell. That sounds like a brand opportunity. You should probably contact bowels. <laughs> in, in addition to setting up yeah. our huge TV next to that guy, we're also going to yeah. set up in our bowels, bowels station, uh, station <laughs> yeah. next to the balls people. So. Yeah. Seen any, we're, seen just, any... we're just selling balls. Like, we've just... Also ordered wholesale a bunch of, of their drink, but we're pronouncing it differently. Is that <laughs> <laughs> like, any other sweet games been viewed by you guys? The Walking Dead. What? <laughs> not, <laughs> not, I'm sorry. I meant I meant a quick con. Oh, we're not talking about it. Why? You? Uh, all right. All right. No. No. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> we can talk. No. No. He just wants you to be in the awkward position. I do. That's kind of what I wanted yeah. to happen, but no. Actually, my dream is related to Walking Dead, so when we call Sean... Oh, yeah. Get oh. oh we yeah. Should we do that? I think, we're yeah. gonna, I think we're gonna call Sean, yeah. Well, you had a dream. I did. I had a dream And you're gonna tell Sh Sean about it, right? I am, but we have to call him first. Okay. Right. Maybe we should just call Sean. That's right. weird. What, yeah, what else? He said we should call him. <laughs> okay. Do you guys do mind any... if we call Sean really quick? Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll call Sean. <laughs> he might not be here. He might not be. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> Not even Sean. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to be around. But did he answer? This is terrible. <laughs> this, no, this is what people, this this people is came to Quake Hunt for. Some people flew out to Dallas to hear this. Well, we did. <laughs> well, yes. Hi, this is Sean. Please leave a message. Okay. Can we just tell the story into the message? Yeah. Leave. Yeah. Leave a me- leave, leave the voicemail on with the with the dream. Okay. Tell him about it. Okay. So I had this dream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So the dream was I was playing The Walking Dead, and it was basically the first episode of The Walking Dead. But I was walking around, and I completely. Wait, were you in it, or were you playing? The I was. Video I was in it. Okay. I was. Were you Nick Brecken, or were you Nick Brecken okay. in, in The Walking Dead? Nick right. Brecken um, in The Walking with Dead with my mayor. And I was, I was, I was with your mirror, M- mayor, yeah, mayor, like old, old Brecken's oh, mayor. Not. Just come so on. I was in The Walking Dead, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I completed The Walking Dead episode one, and I got to the end, and there was a new game plus option. Uh-huh. And so I, I, I went to the new game plus option, and instead of like The Walking Dead and adventure game stuff, there were uh, like bananas from Donkey Kong Country, and I was running around <laughs> collecting the bananas, and every time I collected a banana, Sean Vanneman's voice would appear, and he would say, "That's the stuff." <laughs> <laughs> Like basically like Mortal Kombat, like Toasty. It was Sean just going, "That's the stuff. That's the stuff. That's the stuff." For like an hour, and that was the dream because I was collecting so many bananas. It was just nonsense. No, okay, because you were collecting so oh, many we bananas. That. We, we, yeah. We, yeah. So that is maybe a new game plus that. option that you should maybe. So implement. can we get you guys saying "That's the stuff" to Sean if I count to three? <laughs> All right. Yeah. I think we should do, do one, two, three. That, that's the stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And also, we have an episode name now, so yeah. that's good. <laughs> uh, that was a good voicemail message. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what Sean needs. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Sean was on the on this episode, although it was his uh, voicemail greeting. Yeah. So that's lesson. Less Maybe impressive. he'll call you back. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave my phone on just in case. <laughs> um, uh, what about uh, Klopp? We were talking about Klopp? We could. Talk, we, we could. Did you I play haven't played it. it, so... You did play it or you I haven't. I haven't seen I haven't it. played I haven't it either. Played oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? We can talk about Klopp okay. for a second. We you tell, know what tell Klopp, me about is, Klopp is, though. Jake. Vaguely. So presumably I mean, I, everyone like here, I hope... Some people replied to me yesterday saying, saying Klopp. Klopp, Klopp, Klopp. I don't you, guys know, you guys know Klopp, obviously. Yeah. And do you, <laughs> strong strong have you been agreement from the audience. Did Klopp get announced before QuakeCon? It, it came out yesterday. It was on Friday. But I, I noticed that Klopp failed to sweep the BYOC area like I was expecting. <laughs> I was actually walking around expecting to see it on at least one monitor, yeah. and I didn't yeah. see it. Klopp is like Quop, but you play as a unicorn who has to climb a hill. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, a, it's, it's, Quop, it's Quop with four legs, yeah, basically. It's, yeah. It's, uh, so you have to sort of, so yeah, you press two, two keys for... F- Front, right, right. So front, you already back. have four keys in Quop. So what? what it's right. one per leg. It's, it just makes the horse go like this it's with its front, legs. Yeah. It's lift so like, leg. It, I'm glad this is a video podcast. Yeah. When you when you press when yeah. you yeah. here, let me put out a key here. You press this and a leg goes up <laughs> and then you let go and a leg goes down. But when it goes down, it moves forward a uh, little bit. So if you yeah. press just the both forward legs, the the unicorn just goes like this and then sort of stops until so you, you just, move the back. You're triggering legs. an actual walk animation on each leg as yes. opposed to it's like, like physics the, impulses. Up is the first half, but then it still is weirdly physics driven and like his head. Is not oh, yeah. really in your control, so it you can around. you can still flip the unicorn. Yeah, once you, when you make the unicorn <laughs> land on its head, you lose. Yeah. So right. it's like, uh, can you get a unicorn to climb stairs on a hill by making its legs go Jesus. crazy and right. shit? It's, well, so and, it's um, it's and horrible. Some, something I really, I mean, the mechanics are great, I mean, but I also like I mean, the hilarious. The <laughs> I like the hilarious fiction that. Uh, so th- these games are made by a guy named Bennett Foddy, who we uh, really interviewed once, guy. and he's like a really smart dude. Um, and yeah, he, he, made, he made this little fictional rap around it where there's the unicorn standing here and then there's, it takes place in medieval times, I guess, because there's this sort of like foppish bard kind of guy with like a yeah, floppy hat. Yeah, but he's also kind of like... a restaurant medieval times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but, he's, but he's like... But the actual medieval times. Right. And, and right. It's, it's all terrible fake old English and he's saying to the unicorn like, hey unicorn, I hear there, there, there dost be a virgin over thine hill. <laughs> Perhaps thou shalt like seek it out or whatever. And so you're trying to do it and whenever you fail and the unicorn flips over, he's like, ha ha, try again fool. <laughs> and he just yeah. makes fun of you, uh, which is amazing <laughs> and I love. Especially because, so, you know, Bennett Foddy is this dude who I guess just hates people, so he makes games uh, yeah. to make their lives <laughs> worse. Seems to be, yeah. and, and so, like, you know, I enjoy that, that it's just him making fun of you while you play it. Uh, and especially because the Olympics are going on, and um, he is on Twitter, and he tweets about the Olympics kind of a lot, which is not surprising, right? Because you make games about, like, 
running track and rock climbing and stuff. But yeah. all but all that he's <laughs> tweeting, he make he makes games that look like that. Well, yeah, but yeah. they're based on sports, right? Yeah. So whatever. So but the point is, he's he's watching the Olympics. But all he tweets about is how he really hopes that someone will start crying or like puke, <laughs> like like he's like or puke. He, yes, <laughs> like this is what he's been talking about. He's like he's like, oh, Chen got fourth in the trampoline. I think the tears are coming. <laughs> and, then, and then it'll tweet like two minutes later. He's like, darn, no tears. Well, that's and, and, then, and then like one time he was like, oh, that runner. Just just finished. I don't think he's gonna make it. it looks like he's gonna puke. <laughs> I was like, "This is amazing." So his, like, his perception of the Olympics is actually he sort of sees it through this weird serial killer filter where they're actually <laughs> playing his games. Yeah, right. Yeah. Qua- to him, Quap is not. That to him is very naturalistic. Yeah, right. right. This is just yeah. when he watches a track and field event. That's what he. He's perceives. like, these guys are so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> this must be really stressing them out. <laughs> he's just imagining their brain pressing keys, right, yeah. like yeah. contorting limbs. Yeah, so he doesn't just take glee in players of his video games like completely failing at sports. He also wants professional athletes who entire lives are like resting on it to get disqualified and break down <laughs> crying. We're like, you're an amazing person, guy who made Klopp. <laughs> it's a pretty good game. Yeah, it's good. Uh, 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 <laughs> Fair question. I think we're at the half hour mark, which is the middle of our panel, which is when, um, well, if Chris had a guitar, we'd maybe play a song or yes. something, but uh, we'll splice one in that you guys don't get to see. We'll just splice in the PAX <laughs> yeah. performance of the wizard for the final version of the video. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think actually what we're thinking about doing uh, is just doing the second half of this as Q&A, if you guys are up for that. Do people have questions? Do people want to ask know. stuff? Yeah, if you want to do... We didn't announce that, so if you don't have questions, If you, if you don't fine. want to say anything, questions. that's fine. We saved the whole second half. We sa- yeah, we've got <laughs> nothing to talk about, so... Um. Well, the thing is, like reader mail, somebody can ask one question, and then we can talk for 45 minutes. So <laughs> All it takes is one. Uh, but we don't we have probably that. don't need a ton of questions. Or do we? Do we have internet questions? Are you asking me for real? No. <laughs> Is this, is this rhetorical? No. It's, it's okay, I'm going to do a thing now. Check this out. I'm going to go get You're going to go to the internet? Are you going to the phones? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go get the microphone and we're going to... Oh, we're yeah. actually going to do that. Let's okay. do it. And what else? All right. Go, Jake, go. I don't know. We're streaming. Do it, Jake. We believe in you. Yeah. Woo, Jake! <laughs> Getting up! Taking initiative. Talk into it. Uh, <laughs> So now it just looks like you're a motivational speaker who's yeah. standing up and you're going to like on? pep yeah, up the crowd. Can you guys hear what I'm saying into this microphone? Yeah. Now I can. Uh, so this is for Steve. Okay. Hi. Uh, say the wizard. <laughs> uh, Babu. Oh. Sorry, oh, did I do it wrong? <laughs> does anyone actually want to ask anything to anyone? Nobody does. Nobody does, Jesus. <laughs> so I say yes! Hands. Nobody cares. And I'm going to run away from the microphone and go back over okay. there. But so it's your job now. <laughs> I'll, I'll hand it to off. Feel you're carrying this <laughs> okay. I'll be Jerry Springer. Run, run. Uh, hi, guys. Um, big fan of your work. Thanks for bringing back the podcast. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. Thanks for being here. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, really quick. Good God. Also, to anyone who listens to this podcast, and especially to people who backed us on Kickstarter, holy fucking shit. Thank you so much. <laughs> we didn't say that at the beginning because we took so long to come back that I kind of forgot to say thank you all the time when we do these now. Thank you, guys. Jesus, holy yeah, Christ. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Good question. So I have this, I have a theory that nobody likes, and some people are actually angry at me that I dare suggest it, so I'm kind of curious what y'all's take is on it. Sure. Is this Chick-fil-A related? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, the gist of my theory is that I think digital distribution will destroy game consoles. And my logic goes like this. So game consoles are sold by places like the Walmarts and Targets of the world. They have next to no margin, because they're cheap, right? They're $200 or whatever. And the only way that the Walmarts of the world want to carry game consoles is because they make more money on other things, like selling the games. But if the next version of the PlayStation or the Xbox uh, doesn't even have an optical drive, that takes the games out of the question. So why would they bother to carry them anymore? Um, They could carry something like uh, code cards or whatever that you could type in a a code and download. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, plus, as soon as people figure out, hey, I could just skip the trip to the store and buy the next one online, it's done. Yeah. So the only way that they could, the only way they would carry it is if um, they were more expensive and there was a margin in it for the store, which would kind of erode the point of a game console. Yeah. Plus, I don't think that this could ever happen unless all the companies did it at the same time, because the next Xbox doesn't have a drive and the PlayStation 3 does, Xbox is out. Uh, is my theory. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I, I, don't, I, I think that's. I, I mean, I think you're right on yeah. on on the components of that. I mean, I think that what you're pointing out is why the next consoles will all have optical drives. Right. Right. Because like right. the retailers need to have. And, and so it's not just the retailers, right? Like there's a ton of people in this country and other countries that don't have access to broadband that's good for downloading games from, and they want to go to a store and buy a disc and have the game. Because otherwise. You know, like I mean, like Steam does really well in it, and 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 XBLA and everything. But that said, you're going to miss a lot of people if they have to have a high-speed internet connection to to play your games. So there's a couple sides to that. But I do I, I think that there will be other reasons that the console market, like the hardware side, changes a ton after. I think this is the last generation yeah. of consoles that are going to function like the consoles that we know of now. Because I mean, like you said, costs are going so far up and people have so many other options for how to get their games if they want to um, that and, and I mean cost of the hardware and of just making a game that looks good enough to justify buying a new console for and everything that yeah I think it's just going to be unsustainable after this generation and I think it's going to be pretty spectacular to watch what happens to consoles in the next Game, five or ten years. Games are also a weird holdout right like very few other forms of entertainment are still so centered around expensive proprietary boxes that are bought in physical locations. I mean, yeah. it's just not, you obviously, there's still, people still send, sell tons of DVD players and, and, uh, and. But and still far, far less than were sold 10 years ago. Exactly, yeah. right. And it's well, not. And you can buy any DVD player you want you and watch any, any DVD right. on it. And also, the movie, when you buy it through iTunes or Amazon Video or whatever, Comes is. The code or it, yeah, it's the same. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It makes no difference. Yeah. You know, the, movie, the content of the film is the same. Like, he doesn't need this expensive process to port a thing to another system and then do this simultaneous rollout and all this nonsense. I mean, uh, I agree with Steve in that I think the next generation absolutely is still going to look very much like this one, but uh, I think you're completely correct in the long term. I mean, it's, it's a kind of an insane business model that, that consoles are, are, are predicated on. It, it's not the way the rest of the world is, is moving. Well, yeah, um, movies and TV and music and has all, been there a long has, time. but it's all, it's all moved away though. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, my, my guess is that your basic thesis that download digital distribution will destroy consoles is basically true in the long term. I guess I wonder whether you think that's a negative thing. <laughs> well, I, um, I, I think it's great. Personally. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. <laughs> I'd love to yeah. never have to buy another piece of dedicated hardware just to play a fucking video yeah. game. Yeah, the one, one of the corollary is I'm, I'm not 100% sure the PC will be what takes over again. Uh, yeah. I would love it if it is because I'm a big PC gamer guy or yeah. whatever. But yeah. I just kind of, I mean, you know, Apple has convinced most of the world that you don't want an optical drive anymore. People are building computers without optical drives and just relying on Steam. We've well, seen what that's fine. done with uh, retail for PC. You go to uh, go to packages, go to GameStop, yeah. and yeah. there's a smattering of PC games that are all behind the counter, like they're cigarettes or something. So. Well, I'm a, I mean, I'm, I play almost everything on PC, and I haven't bought a physical game in years. I mean, there's just no need to at this point. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think pretty much on the right track. Yeah. Who's next? Thanks for the applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that guy. Sorry, that, that one guy. Uh, uh, like, what? I just heard that one guy clap, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, first thing, I am 30 minutes late to the cast because I saw Jake walking around, and I thought you guys were in the really big room. So I sat there for like 30 oh, minutes, no, no. like, when are you guys going to let us in? Come on. Oh, uh, so that was a little bummer. But... Um, the main thing I wanted to ask is, on the first return cast, Chris, you said you felt like maybe you were too old to enjoy Diablo 3? I don't know if it's that I'm too old, it's that I just, it's hard for me to, because I'm not old, but I mean it's, it's, right. <laughs> but it's, it's hard for me to, it was just such a direct sequel, right? Like I mean it's in a lot of ways mechanically, I mean I think tonally it's a very different game. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what it's trying to achieve, like the things Diablo 3 wants me to enjoy, are basically the same as the thing 
Diablo 2 wants to enjoy, even if it goes about them in different ways. And, and you played Diablo 2 for like hundreds of hours, I, right? Yeah, right. I played yeah, for hundreds of hours. And so it's just impossible for me to put myself in the same mind space as I was a decade ago. All right, because the only thing I was going to ask was, you know, you really love Torchlight as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's very, I mean... Torchlight similar to Diablo 2. Similar to Diablo than Diablo 3. Right, because Diablo, Diablo 3 has a weird system. I was just curious if so, you think that collates yeah. in any way. Right, so the... Yeah, and people have asked me this and have, used, and have suggested to me that my, my judgment of those games is very inconsistent, and I think that's, that's totally a fair, a fair response. Um, but I guess to me, what is more important now than it probably was to me when I was playing Diablo 2 is not so much the uh, kind of fidelity of the systems in play and is more what I see in the authorship behind the game. When I play Torchlight, it feels to me so much like a team that was like agile and enjoy, like just loving the hell out of what they were doing and just a small team of people making this thing they really cared about like really came through to me. And I don't doubt for a second that the Diablo 3 team loved what they were making and was really passionate and dedicated about to it, but it just, but it just feels like such a bigger product in, in a way that is just not as like, personally exciting to me right now at this point in my life which is different than how I would have judged something 10 years ago. All right, well, if it makes you feel any better, I, I like Torchlight better. Like, I played, <laughs> played Diablo 3, you know, got to Inferno within the first couple of weeks, and I was like, I have nothing to do yeah, anymore, I kinda, so... I didn't get that far. I, I did play a fair amount of... I played, a, I don't know, Diablo about Diablo 20, 20 hours of Diablo 3, maybe a little more than that. And then I, I was done, and I moved my computer from one place to another, and, like, that kind of just... Broke the streak and that was I enough. Never, like just didn't really load it up again ever after that. I only played it when it was in the beta, but it was just like, it was just like a video game lullaby to me. I was just fucking falling asleep while I was playing. It. <laughs> like it's just such a tune out game. Just like uh, I guess I just click on everything. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 there was it was it was really 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 unengaging to me. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, now but, a video game lullaby is going to be excerpted and used as a laudatory <laughs> quote on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I needed to be playing on like super hard mode, so I was dying yeah. all the time. Or no, something, no. But. I mean that is kind of. I do know what you mean though. Like, they they tu they. That's an, there's an interesting thing about game design, which is that if you tune it too well, a lot of times you can just flatten your curve too much. And I feel like that was true about Diablo 3, where they, they, it's such, it is such a smooth curve in terms of difficulty, in terms of uh, like uncovering items. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. in Diablo 3, I never had that experience of finding the thing that's 20 levels too high for me and being like, whoa, this is exciting. This is a crazy thing that like someday I'll be able to use. You know, I mean, everything, it feels so tuned and so well polished, whereas Diablo 2, Feels like such. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a it's a big that's budget a, game, but it feels so unpolished, and I love I love it. I love that's it. <laughs> that you see in Bethesda games too, and yeah, like, like Sky, that's why I really enjoy what they do with Skyrim because it's not as tuned as previous Elder Scrolls games, and you just hit that point where there's just a giant monster dude who basically just smashes your face, and you know, it's just it's not leveled up to what you are, and it, so it, it it basically serves as something in, like a unique experience, which otherwise it would just be a ramp. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's something that happens in game design a lot, where it's like the logical conclusion of best practices for tuning something is yeah, just to sand off all of the edges and yep, just make right. it this perfect like un unblemished you know surface of sure, of game design. And in fact, what's there's nothing that's surprising about that, right? right? And whereas when you're like, well, we're gonna basically get it kind of in line, so you never get totally screwed, and you never go too long without finding something that's good, then occasionally you're gonna find the outliers where you're like, holy shit, I didn't expect the flaming sword to drop already, I can't wait to use this, or yeah. whatever. And I think that can happen in, in any genre, really. Well, and, um, I, and I think that's why on Idle Thumbs we really respond to games kind of in the, in the looking glass shit. lineage, you know? Like, oh, Sean's calling. <laughs> <laughs> get him on the Are get him on the speakerphone. Oh hey Sean. Oh what's up, dude? Hey. <laughs> can people hear Sean? Yeah. 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 Yes, people can hear you. People can hear you. Oh hey everybody. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Nick there? Yes. Hi Sean. Nick, I had a crazy dream about you last night. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> really? Okay, let's hear this. Uh, I mean. I don't really remember much, but there was something about bananas. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you felt like you didn't have enough bananas in your life, so every time you would, you would acquire one, I would scream, that's the stuff to you, and uh, cheer you up. It was, it was a really crazy dream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's
That's incredibly coincidental. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. coincidence. Yeah, no. Oh. Yeah. Twitter chillers. Yeah. It's, yeah. How is everybody? I miss you all very much. <laughs> they like hearing your voice, Sean. Right? Can, can Sean hear me? <laughs> no, I don't know. Can you call me? Because he, uh, whatever that was, like half an hour ago, because the idea was that I would call to the panel, that I got the time screwing my head, because Dallas is not in California, I guess. Oh. And, um, <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, he definitely caught me playing Dota on the phone went off with like three thumbs people, so I feel pretty bad about that I in see, general. I just want people to know, I have literally no idea what he's saying. Oh, he's, <laughs> yeah, I know. He said that he was confused about the time because Dallas isn't in California and we, he wasn't paying attention to his phone because he was playing Dota. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so that's, that's All right, fine. Go back to Dota, Sean. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Understand completely. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> yeah, see you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that was cool. So as we were saying, video games. <laughs> uh, next question, I guess. All right. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Yes. Next. Does anyone else? Have a, I think this this okay. gentleman here. So on sort of the opposite end of Diablo 3, you mentioned Skyrim and, you know, you work for Bethesda, so you play these games all the time. Uh, Skyrim recently came on Steam sale for QuakeCon, so it was 50% off. So my friends are finally buying it after, and I look at my Steam, I've got 400 hours in this game, and I'm like, how did I ever do anything <laughs> for 400 hours, right? I mean, like, that's, weird. that's longer than I've kept some jobs. <laughs> so, like, how, how do you pull that off? Like, what kind of headspace do you get into? I mean, I have to get into it, like, this is for my leisure time, so I don't have to do this for my job. But, like, if someone's making, says, okay, you're going to sit here, and you're going to do this for 400 hours, <laughs> or you don't get to eat. <laughs> like, I don't think I could play video games. So you're, you're asking. I mean, you, well, you 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 have to play shit, yeah, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you're like, I mean, you're not like a playtester or QA or whatever, but I feel like, like I've played Dishonored for 400 hours at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, because I mean, you spend a lot of time doing evaluation and like gathering media and stuff, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just it's like I mean, you know, developers, you you guys know more than I do, but like I. You, I, I I've heard that uh, <laughs> the experience of that is that you're making the game and then there's a moment at the end where you can just like sit down and enjoy it and that's always nice. Yeah, Sometimes I mean, there's that moment. There is that moment <laughs> yeah. for some people. Sometimes that's years later. I mean, but I, I was talking to Arcane guys and they, they were... ruined on something. Yeah. I was talking to the Arcane guys yesterday and they were like, yeah, I finally got to like actually play our video game once and they, they, were, really, they were really pumped. Well, it, it's yeah, some, but, that's something I mean, that happens on big games a lot. Like, I know as a level designer on, like, a, a, a big game, like, you're like, okay, this is your level. You're responsible for this hour and a half of the yeah. game or whatever. And it's like, all right, I've played that level for yeah. about 800 hours, you know? And, and, right. and you don't have time or any reason, you know, like, it's not your responsibility to, like, play other people's stuff. Until a lot of times, yeah, late in development, it's like, all right, everybody, you're not doing any work today. We're taking a couple days, and everybody's going like. to do a full playthrough. And, and I think that's probably what those guys are talking about, where it's yeah. like, whoa, I got my... I actually got to step back from the game and see the rest of it, what everybody else was making, and it was really yeah. cool. You know, it, yeah. for me, it's like the experience of playing like the Unreal Tournament demo a thousand times, and just like you know what I mean. Like I did that. Yeah, well, yeah, I did too. But like I did that with Skyrim, where I like had to demo the same thing a thousand times or play the same level a thousand times, and it's basically that becomes like another game unto itself because yeah. it's, it's not finished, and so that is also just something that feels alien once you actually play that finished level. So yeah. When you start talking about it in the context of the Unreal Tournament demo, this is actually sad and is not actually historically accurate, but I remember when Quake 3 was in beta and there was like DM17, I think was the only map in that. This is QuakeCon, so I can talk about this, right? <laughs> Somewhat relevant. We had one map. Yeah, it had, it, had, it, had, it, had, it had DM17, and I remember in, the, in Quake 3 in particular, everyone who was playing the Q3 test, I think there was so little in there that people weren't able to extrapolate out what the entirety of Quake 3 was. And then it turned out it was just Q3 tests with more maps. And I remember that really <laughs> pissing some people off. Right. But then they forgot that it was actually really good. Um, yeah. Play Quake 3. <laughs> Quake on. Anyway, that's Quake all. Quake Live Arena. I just, sorry, like Unreal Tournament, I don't think that was the case because that game was, a, a, was a wacky mechanic so zoo and it was yeah. a piece of shit. You don't play Unreal this. Tournament. <laughs> um, oh. 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 Holy shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Last time I was here Disorder was 2001. Can't say that. Unreal <laughs> Tournament. <laughs> Unreal Tournament. The original. Why would you play that when that you can? Was awesome. It was awesome. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Translocator. Yeah. 
CTF. This I mean, episode I mean, is being beamed from the 2001 QuakeCon to today, where we're going to have a Q3 versus UT debate. And I'm going mean, to fucking I fall, win. I fall on the Quake side. You and I have historically yeah, fallen on Quake please. Side, but, but No, it's ultimately a better game, but yeah. I still that's thought right. UT was awesome. This is good. This is good. I'm glad this is happening. Anyway, <laughs> that's why you play Skyrim for 400 hours, because Quake 3 is the superior multiplayer first-person shooter. Yeah. Um, all right, go JP. Oh, so yeah, oh. hi. Is JP a liberal? What are you? Home? You are just the lounging as lounging. I am. Um, I'm yeah. A question for you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, lording. I'm lording. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, okay. Break it. Break it down for us. Actually, like you know, t oh, okay. eleven years after the fact, like let's oh, no. fight this battle again. What? Okay. Let, t pros and cons. Quake three versus Unreal Tournament. What? What? So in your mind, Jake, you seem to be the, you seem to have the strongest opinion here. I was. I was. Uh, I don't really. <laughs> I was. I you swung do, both yeah. ways, so just, you know. Just, I enjoyed both. I, but I yeah. mostly. I, I thought. But, see, I thought you were going to say, "Take us back 11 years. Tell us about QuakeCon 2001." Uh, I don't yeah, about that. That's, that. that's probably more interesting. Yeah, but I, like, I what don't do you really. Remember about I don't really remember a ton about QuakeCon 2001, <laughs> other than it was in Mesquite and it was double booked with the rodeo, which is awesome. <laughs> um, otherwise, it was really similar, except instead of people playing. There's a surprising amount of Quake Live being played at QuakeCon, which is stupid for me to say because the, it's QuakeCon. Yeah. But like, I didn't actually honestly expect to see that many uh, like basically Q3 games going on. Except in 2001, I was here because I had done like, some texture work and a little bit of UI for a Quake mod, and like so I was oh, pimp your mod uh, so uh -huh. I can download it. Pimp uh -huh. your mod. Um, the one that people actually played at QuakeCon was called Pro Ball, which is awesome. And it's a, it was a Got game. any pro ball players in the house? No one knows pro ball. <laughs> Show applause, pro Whatever. ball. Yeah, that one guy. Yeah. Thanks, one dude. Um, I, I was more of a, I was, I was a fan of the competing product, Kick Me Quake, but that's because yeah. a friend but worked on the, it. The thing that I remember about QuakeCon, which was actually really depressing to me, was that since people played Quake competitively and they were playing it on 2001 hardware, it just meant that everyone had the lowest possible lighting model. Everyone had all the textures blurred oh, yeah. out to be like a one by one orange square. So it looked like it looked like people were playing these games that are like including the mods because people were playing those competitively. Like friends, my friends were all people who did the art <laughs> stuff on these games, and I was like, this is the people that were making these games before they just actually turned everything off. This sucks. Um, and then we did one really. I, 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 lo I love the irony of that. Yeah, it looks like yeah. If you if you love Star Fox, yeah, you'll love. Yeah. Uh, I, I fucking love that. That, that you come to QuakeCon because you're like, oh, I made some sweet textures. Let's go see him in... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was my memory of QuakeCon. But then I guess in Quake Live, you can't turn all that stuff off as easily. So I, you can, Yeah, you can definitely turn it up so that, yeah, and if you're playing Stock Quake 3, people, and, I, and I saw people on the BYOC floor still doing that because, you know, if you have a... Now circa, you can get 3,000 if, yeah, if you have a circuit 2012 PC, you definitely got to go our pick map. Seven or How whatever. Can you play too. that like shit that at only twenty-eight fifty frames per second. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Seriously, yeah. I like that we've now just absorbed JP into the. Panel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, A fifth thumb. <laughs> That's no, what I say. I really don't actually care about Unreal Tournament versus Quake at this point. I just remember at the time thinking that it was way more gimmicky and it annoyed me. Are, are there embarrassing Usenet posts we could dig up on Google on the Google Groups archive <laughs> in which you are you're coming out no, I'm strongly? Sure, I'm sure that the no, there's definitely not. Don't look. At <laughs> Yeah, Do not search uh, Jake Rodkin UT3 uh, <laughs> or you, you Unreal Tournament, please. Just don't. Don't, don't. don't look at it. <laughs> I just thought Unreal Tournament was just fun because it was so crazy. Like, it just had crazy yeah. mode. I, I've always liked crazy modes. I mean... Uh, you, like, you like a mutator? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and like when I played Halo, for I like example... A, a good mutator, a fine <laughs> mutator. <laughs> Artisanal mutator. Like, yeah. when, I, when I played Halo, the only mode That's that I, I didn't play... That's what I played Quake 3 as. That was oh, my oh, name. Artisanal <laughs> mutator. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah like, I would always just play everything except deathmatch, except in Q3, obviously. But like games yes. that have crazy modes, I always just play the crazy mode instead yeah. of the or just mm. the crazy map. Yeah, or the crazy map or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was definitely a mishmash game of like a thousand early. You launched six rockets while in yeah. the low gravity thing while someone was firing a first person guided missile at you, and then I went ugh. <laughs> well, so you were on like a vaguely World War II map because that was just what you did then, like yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That's that's sort of what I remember about Unreal Tournament. Also, I think that was in the demo. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You, you like storm the beaches. The I think it's what? Like, I thought the demo of Unreal Tournament was the, the like map where you're floating around in huge space. Yeah, there was that skyscraper. DM Morpheus. Morpheus. I, yes. <laughs> you know all this shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do we, do we have another question? <laughs> Anyone? Yes! Question, dude. All right, I'd like to address the guys with the double fine. 
Uh, there's always that guy that. Uh, that's right just now. Chris. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I mean JP. Well, JP also read. But JP already yeah. spoke. Yeah. You got your token talking out for this. <laughs> well, everybody loves Tim Schafer, and yeah, there's always guy. that one dickhole that asks the same question. Oh, what's it like working with Tim Schafer? Uh -huh. But uh, just working around the office, maybe in time for like a deadline or some random thing. But uh, do you have like maybe an off the wall story just working with Tim? Um, I don't know if I have any off the wall stories about Tim. Tim's an awesome boss, though. He really, he's really, really cool. He's a really good guy. Um, it is a really good office. It's fun. Uh, we, there's a lot of food-related challenges that happen at <laughs> Double Fine, which is really weird. There's one, there's one called the Chavo's Challenge, which there's this Mexican re JP knows. There's this Mexican restaurant a couple blocks away called Chavo's, which is like notorious at Double Fine. And there's, depending on who you talk to, Chavo's is either just just stomach disaster, or it's a really nice place to eat. And so there's, there's about, Depends on who's know. working the back that day. What's that? Depends on who's working the back that day. Yeah, I think it actually it depends, depends on whose stomach is It depends is, on the thickness is, of the stomach yeah, lining of the person in. responding. Um, and so a couple months ago, there was the Chavo's challenge, which was, was it a week or was it 10 days, JP? It was a work week. It was a work, yeah. So the challenge was to go to, to eat Chavos every day for an entire week, and it was it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> one only one guy made it, and, wow. it was, and it was the guy who it's yeah. just the one guy who's the Chavo like the champion for Chavos. Yeah. Um, so like of course he made it, just leaving a trail of intestinal destruction in his way. <laughs> like they win well, anything for well, it. Or then just there was also were, were there rules for this? Did you have to order a specific? Think because I mean, anything it seems you like order is just enormous. Well, you oh, can't okay. just get chips and salsa, right? right. You have to, yeah, you, you know, you have to make it honest. You I'll take the nice side salad. salad. Yeah. But in terms of another food related challenge, since you asked about rules, there's another food related challenge that had very explicit rules, which is the McDonald's challenge, which is you must go to McDonald's, uh, you must eat at McDonald's every day for a week, and you bring ten dollars and you must order, you must spend all $10 <laughs> only from the value menu. And there's, <laughs> there's a very specific range of things that can be ordered from the value menu. There's not really any way to, to cheat this. Like, you, you can't just get a bunch of sodas because they're not on right, there. Right, the actual yeah. volume um, of food will be high. It's, yeah. it's yeah. distressing. I mean, you, 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 <laughs> to, you, could, to you could probably somebody. try to game it, but you would end up with like no, there's plus no, or minus one cheeseburger. Yeah, probably, right. No, there's not right? really like, any way to game it because everything is just As far as volume dollar. goes, right? It, yeah, yeah but, but I mean, you just get a bunch of orders of fries or, or maybe fries aren't even on there. They're not. So everyone just comes back with like 10 sandwiches. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> just like... Just, just a bag of cheeseburgers that they have to end like. And that's a one day thing, right? That's not no, a. No, 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 that's the entire week. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, well, that's just fucking impossible. Yeah. It's totally impossible. And, I mean, and did it anyone just, pass it? Uh, I don't think anyone did. I think the How closest. How could you? I think Jeremy came the closest. He ate like eight out of ten things, and everyone was cheering him on, and he's just like, guys, it's, impo it's completely impossible. This is not going to fit inside <laughs> this. This Ooh. corporeal form. The worst would be if over the course of the week the McDonald's challenge became easier. What, as you just expand yourself? Yeah, as you're like, <laughs> the first day it takes you two or three hours, and by the end you're yeah. like, value meal $10, please. <laughs> <laughs> just. Do you guys do drinking games as well, or just do your we, intestinal tract? Do, do you guys do drinking games as well, or do you guys, like, your intestinal no, tract's like too fucked do, as it no, is? No, we don't really do drinking games, although we do every once in a while, every, like, I don't know, month or two. We have a we have a really cool day called the the Hoff, which is where we just put all the team all the because Double Vine is made up of well like four or five teams at, at this point, and we we just put all our games out uh, across the studio and like just have you know bring in food and drinks, and everyone walks around and plays all the games that the other teams are working on, and that gets to something that Steve was talking about, uh, where you're working at you're working on a game, or you're working at a company, and you don't necessarily know everything that's going on all the time um, on all the development, so it's actually really especially at a company like Double Fine where we make several games at once, it's, it's really cool to see the things that your buddies are making that you just haven't seen because they're, you know, heads down at their desk most of the time and you don't come in contact with that stuff. Um, so it's always really surprising to see all the cool stuff that your buddies have come up with in the last month or two. Awesome. Yeah, Double Fine's a good place to work. I think we have, like, two more questions worth of time, if those exist. There's one of them. It's Chris Failer. What? <laughs> so we have one. Yeah, so I we have time for one question. To be ejected. I was just wondering uh, what your thoughts are on HBO's current lineup <laughs> and the uh, upcoming season. I don't know. What's on HBO? What? Right? What? <laughs> what? Uh, thank you for your question. Next. <laughs> yeah. It turns out we have time for three questions. <laughs> uh, yeah. Seriously, are people not going to put their hand up until we talk about HBO's current season? <laughs> What do you think about Newsnight? Um, 
I noticed you have a NASA tattoo. That's awesome. Oh, I do. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, NASA's cool. Are you I, associated with NASA or just a fan? Just a fan. <laughs> that's extra I noticed awesome. You've, you've chosen the yeah. '80s logo as well. well. Yeah, the warm style. It's, yeah, it's the good look. Cooler the good, and the good fits one. better. What? Both on NASA arm. logos are pretty sweet. You don't like the classic one? Right. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever. Jake is just instigator of pointless. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I like both. The NASA classic logos. Unreal Tournament logo was way better. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what was your question? All right, um, <laughs> uh, it pertains to Windows 8, the Metro. Do you all, do you all uh, hear first, that? First, it's PC? no longer called yes. the Metro UI. Microsoft uh, was told by their legal team that they, because someone else owns the name Metro, they have to now refer to it as the Windows 8 style UI across all <laughs> really? platforms. So I hope you're enjoying your Xbox 360 with its Windows 8 style UI. Um, anyway, don't call it that anymore. Okay, Thanks. no, no. Um, <laughs> Off limits. <laughs> Um, it, 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 you know, Gabe Newell said it was a disaster for, for PC gaming. Are y'all afraid of that at all? I'm not afraid. I'm afraid I, there, there have been plenty of revisions of Windows that have come out that nobody fucking bought. <laughs> like, yeah. did anybody buy Windows ME? Like, I no, know, so. right? Uh, I mean, if, if, it's, if, it, if it's that, like, it came bundled on your compact Presario, right? But, like, if... God, the scorn dripping. All I'm saying right? is Windows 8 can no be can bad, but that doesn't mean it's actually going to be adopted, right? Like, there are many versions of Windows that are so bad that they really, nobody buys them, they just stick with you know, the, the prior version that actually worked, and I think Microsoft my, put something else a, a way to, to paper over it. You can turn it away to basically turn it You can turn it off. off. Right? I mean, also, yeah. I think that what you're saying is going to be invalid just because I don't think Microsoft really believed in Windows ME either. Yeah. Like, I think Microsoft is putting everything they possibly have into Windows 8, like, across everything. Their tablet thing, their phone now looks like it, the Xbox looks like it. Like, they're, I don't think they're going to let it go. I think what this is actually going to be is closer to... The, and I would like to be wrong because I think it's weird. Well, actually, back that up. <laughs> I actually think that what they're doing with the, with the Windows 8 UI is really interesting and cool, Style but UI. not for mouse and keyboard-based stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what this feels to me more like, for better or worse, is when Microsoft put Internet Explorer out, everyone said, this is bullshit. And then they said, mm. is it? We're going to put all our fucking money into this for 10 years until it's really good, and then it's going to be bad later. And the same thing happened with the Xbox, where everyone's like, that's just a computer with a box that you're trying, and they're like, nope, you know what, we actually are putting everything into this, fuck you, you're going to have one. And now, like, there was a solid, at least three quarters of a decade where everyone used IE, and there was a, t and I feel like Windows 8 is going to be shoved down your throat. And it may be the next one of them is going to be good, or the one after that, but I feel like, like, this feels like one of the Microsoft is actually committed to these things instead of the yeah. Microsoft is making a weird, horrible thing, which is what, like, I mean, ME I, felt like Bob or something, where so it's like, that's as, going away. As long as game developers can still just target the, the system and just not have to build for Metro, I don't really care that much. Right. You know what Your I mean? Your UI like, I must that, incorporate the Metro, no, like, I just mean, uh, like uh, library? If it's not, I, I feel like it's unlikely to really affect me all that much if I, you know what I mean? Like, what does that have to do necessarily with, with PC games? Civ 6 requires a stylus. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there are already games like, uh, you know, Skulls like Skulls of the, of the Shogun, Shogun that yeah, is going to require Windows 8. And like anything that... I, 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 <laughs> illegal. <laughs> fucking illegal. Um, and, anything that comes out that... Anybody that wants Microsoft money so that they can put their game on the native Microsoft app store that's attached to the, you know, like basic experience of Windows 8 is going to have to... That's true. Say, hey, That's okay, true. well, now we require Windows 8 because we want to be on your app store, and you can opt out of that. But like, there are a lot of people that aren't going to, or aren't going to but, really have the practical option yeah. to. Right? We'll see how common that is, though, because most yeah, we'll see. most no, game I mean, developers who put yeah. games on PC don't communicate with Microsoft about it ever. Actually, like, is I the mean, is the app store going to mean now that to be Microsoft certified as a game, you don't need to go through games for Windows Live, but you can go through the same app store certification process that everyone else who wants to be on Windows 8 does? Because if so, that means Windows 8 is actually probably going to be good for uh, like AAA PC games. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, that's just a good, saying that's a that. But just because it's a better, worse thing. So yeah. So so games for Windows Live, as far as I'm aware, is yeah totally going away go slash away, being yeah. rolled into that. But yeah. my understanding is that. Can we let JP talk before we're done? Well, sure. But all I'm saying is, <laughs> my, what I understand is that their app store is very much based on Xbox Live style stuff. That's like very uh, small footprint and and but, basically like touch focus. So it's, it's going to be the same as Games Windows Live except there will actually be employees paying attention to your games that go through the certification process. 
I don't think so. Because GFWL and, and, my, and Xbox certification are really similar, but you just sit in the Games for Windows Live queue forever because I don't think that it's as high of a priority. Anyway, what are we talking about? <laughs> Hi, video games. The, uh, I, th I think the reason that, that Gabe Newell and what whoever Blizzard guy w were really down on Windows 8 is because... Well, Gabe Newell and whatever Blizzard guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, refer to him as Blizzard. guy. Yeah, um, is because the, the, the Windows... People, what they're worried about is that the Windows App Store will be the Internet Explorer analog that, yeah, Gabe Newell is worried about Steam becoming the he's Netscape. He's worried about proprietary, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, worrying about Steam, about Steam becoming the Netscape to yeah, that's exactly what Microsoft's about. Internet Explorer, you know, uh, to their marketplace. Right. Because, you know, if it's a marketplace that's built into the operating system instead of one that you have to install or something, that's bad news for him. And right. Microsoft, depending on how much Microsoft wants to be a dick about it, yeah. they could really do some yeah. anti-competitive, well, nasty and, stuff. Yeah, and um, from his perspective, the reason that it's a whatever he said, catastrophe for PC gamers is because it closes the platform, right? Like he's saying yeah. PC is an open platform if Microsoft basically strong arms everybody into using their marketplace instead of Steam, well now all PC games that want to be viable have to go through Microsoft cert and you've seen how fun that is for console developers, so the, the, we'll see. The thing I think is different between, between this and the Internet Explorer analogy is that, uh, or in that analogy is, is different, is that Netscape, what happened to Netscape with an Internet Explorer was in an era before the Internet was... It was in an era before the Internet. No, before, <laughs> before it was as sort of intrinsic a part of uh, all of our horrible lives as it is now. And uh, whereas I think people at this point, I mean, you know, maybe this will change, I don't know, but I feel like people who go out of their way to play PC games are generally a pretty aware group of people about their platform. Like if you're going to go out of your way to have a PC that is capable of running games and you're going to buy a game and download it on PC, you probably are aware generally of the environment more so than someone in 1995 or whenever who just was like, what's the internet? Oh, there's this right. internet explorer thing. Like, I guess I'll use that. I, I guess I'll explore it. I think we need to it. shut this down because we're actually out of time, but I will okay. say you say that, but right now, Steam has risen to prominence in an amazing way without ever spending one dollar saying the word Steam. Yeah. And you know that Microsoft is going to spend dollars saying the words App Store. So and maybe that's Valve should start doing that too. That's weird. I mean, that's yeah. That, but that is why Gabe Newell weeps. It's competition. Yeah. yeah. Dollars. I guess all I'll I mean, say it's not the is worst like. For Steam to it's, finally it's, have some it's, competition. It's honestly yeah. it's not. not. No. I mean, but, yeah. but, anyway. Uh, but, but I mean, like, you had ugh. to put a leaderboard in Wallace and Gromit on <laughs> Xbox. Do <laughs> you want to? Do you want to have to do that on your fucking computer? Yes. <laughs> but, oh, but, okay. But he's not going to target that, though. They don't no, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's how, fa how fast Microsoft moves, right? I feel like moves, what right? the future needs is leaderboards in every game. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Are we not at QuakeCon, the home of competitive gaming? <laughs> <laughs> Do we not love leaderboards in Proteus? <laughs> Or what? Are Proteus. Entitled to Proteus? What is Proteus? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's that Ridley Scott movie. I heard it wasn't that good. <laughs> no. What, what game am I fucking thinking of? I have no. Oh, the Proteus. The the pixel art uh, experiential Proteus. game where you walk yeah. around hills yeah, and, and change Proteus. Yeah. Yeah. Prometheus. <laughs> Not Prometheus. <laughs> oh, Avatar. What? what? Oh, oh, Avatar. Oh. Thank you guys for coming to the Alpha <laughs> <Alabama. laughs> Live panel. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, it was great. <laughs> Um, yeah, also thanks to, I don't know if anyone is actually watching this live stream, but thank you for doing that. I'm sorry we couldn't see yeah. what you were saying about how bad we are. Yeah. Um, thanks to Gun Run from Twitch TV for helping yeah, us out. Yeah, thanks to Gun Run for helping us stream this. Woo! All right, thank yeah. you. Yep. Games. All right.